opening statement, please. It's great to be here, obviously, uh, not just because I'm a Cowboy fan, but uh, I'm a big fan of, of these kids and uh, watching them all year long and everything that they've gone through, uh, their, their ability to stick together, their resiliency, uh, and then their just ability to sacrifice uh, has really gotten us to this point. Um, and I'm very proud of their accomplishments and what they've done. So there's been many that have been individual, uh, but the biggest ones are the team goals that we've accomplished and I'm very, very proud of them. Um, and I'm excited for this weekend because uh, we feel like we, if we are the best version of ourselves, then we give ourselves a shot. So I'm looking forward to the opportunity. The Dallas Morning News, this is for Coach Brooks. Um, is this right that you were at the 2017 Final Four in Dallas when UConn had its 111 game winning streak ended? I, I was, and it was a special, special uh, Final Four for me because I have a middle daughter and um, Chloe, and uh, she was probably going through some tough challenges mentally. Uh, she had had an injury with her basketball career, and, uh, and it was a daddy-daughter date. And uh, we came here, we spent time together with each other, took her around, uh, kind of got a chance to show her how cool daddy was in the, in the halabis of the WBCA meetings. Um, and we sat there, up there, and we watched uh, the game, UConn and Mississippi State. Um, and we, we had the best time. And I wish I could give you a story, a, a Disney story ending and a saying that, hey, baby, one day we're going to be here too. Um, but we, we didn't. But it was, a, it was a memorable moment. And to come full circle to know that 2023, I'm going to bring my team. Not, not like Taylor says, we're not at the Final Four. We're in the Final Four. And uh, that's a surreal moment and uh, something that now I get to bring my whole family and not just one kid. you know. And uh, that's something that not only we're experiencing, but all of our families are experiencing, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful moment. Have you used that as any kind of example to your kids that anyone can win the tournament no matter what their record is? Well, I've told these kids all along that they can win it. They had the talent to win it. Uh, they, just, they just weren't good enough to beat themselves and to try to beat these tough opponents. And they bought into that. They're, they're selfless, uh, the most unselfish group I've ever been around in my life. And uh, as a matter of fact, um, all their individual trophies and accolades they're in my office because they just haven't come to pick them up. Because the only thing, the only thing they want to do is win. And uh, so, if you walk into my office, you might think that I'm a decorated basketball player with all the trophies in there. But that's just their unselfishness, and uh, that's what's gotten us here. Sideline, uh, obviously, basketball is the family business for you. I'm curious, going back to when you took the Virginia Tech job, uh, what were those discussions like with your family? Uh, about leaving a pretty good situation at JMU. Were they on board, and did you imagine this was possible back then? Well, congratulations. Welcome back. Um, my family is everything to me. Uh, I played for Lefty Giselle, and uh, you know, Lef Lefty not only taught us basketball, but he taught us family. And everywhere, he w everywhere we went, family, his family was there. Uh, Ms. Drizel, even if I was mad at Coach Drizel, Ms. Drizel would come up and give me a big hug and tell me that she loved me. And, that, and that's something that has meant a lot to me. Uh, when I was at James Madison, I felt like I was so busy making a life that I wasn't living a life. And it was a blur. You know, I watched my kids grow up and I missed a lot. I missed a whole lot. So when the Virginia Tech opportunity came along, um, my wife was on board because she understood that the challenges that I wanted to accomplish, I wanted to test my wits against the best. And she knew that. But my children had never moved. Unprecedented, they had never moved before in their lives. They lived in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Their grandparents lived there. Their cousins lived there. Their aunts, their aunt, they had a normal life. They didn't have a coach's kid life. And, uh, and in turn, I taught them how to hate Virginia and Virginia Tech because we were James Madison. And uh, we were always battling against them. So my oldest child, she was on board. Uh, my baby girl, she didn't know what was going on. She was just going where daddy and mommy went. And my middle child was reluctant. She says, I'm not going. <laughs> she says, I'm staying here. And ultimately, uh, one day I was sitting as I was contemplating, I was sitting on, the, uh, on my bed actually, and my middle child, Chloe, the one who came to the uh, tournament with me in 2017, she laid on the bed with me and she said, I don't wanna be the reason that you don't go out and, and get what you deserve. So she says, I'll go. And when she said that, I just lost it. And uh, right then and there, I knew that they were going to be incorporated in everything that we did at Virginia Tech. And as a result, it's helped us, family atmosphere. Uh, they're, they're around, 
the kids know them. Georgia and Liz come to my house all the time, whether I'm there or not, uh, to see my wife or to cook, to bake or do whatever. Um, so it, it just really helped our culture, uh, incorporating my family into everything. And it's helped me become a better father. I've had more dinners at the dinner table with my kids since I've been at Virginia Tech than I ever imagined having at James Madison. Chris from the New York, New York Times. Uh, Georgia kind of has like a commanding presence on the court. Like how, how have you worked with her in developing that and, and honing that? You know what, she came here and immediately I knew we had something special. I told everyone, we, 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 I told everyone we stole one. And not just because of her basketball ability, but because of her work ethic, uh, her demeanor. Uh, and you know, she came over here in a very tough time. You know, COVID hit uh, two months into her being here. And uh, then the very next year, the season was cut short, and she had five non-conference games before we threw her into the ACC battles. And she and I, I knew she was going to be special, and I challenged her and I coached her like that. And uh, if you had watched my practices with her, you might have thought it was child abuse because I was really going after her because I knew the toughness left that she needed. And she handled every bit of it, handled every bit of it. Uh, she has a very demanding, uh, not demanding, uh, her demeanor is, is a very one of confidence. Um, the kids will follow her. She's like the Pied Piper. You know, if she says, let's do this, the kids will do that. Uh, she's the funniest kid on the team. She's the most quick-witted kid on the team. Uh, and she's our leader. And, uh, and, you know, just, you know, she and Liz, uh, watching them too at practice, they'll go at each other. And it's funny. They speak a different language. But at the end, they respect each other so much. And that's a big reason we're here, because of Georgia's toughness, mentally and physically. Coach, to your left. Skyler Dixon with the AP, a first time Final Four participant and yet a number one seed. How do you kind of use those two opposing things in your messaging? Well, the, well, the number one, uh, the number one seed uh, means that we belong here. Uh, we're, we're not, we're not a, a number six seed who's made a magical run uh, and it's very surprising. Uh, we should expect to be here. A lot of people should expect us to be here. Um, but because of the name on the front, because it hasn't had the history that a Tennessee had or a UConn had, you know, people are really quick to doubt you. And, uh, and our kids have seen that. They, like they mentioned, they are basketball junkies. They know everything that Charlie Cream says. They know everything. They know where they are, bracketology, every second. They know everything. I can text, before I can text them because somebody made a really good move, they're texting me, did you see that move that such and such made? They're basketball junkies. So when they see everything that's written about them and people writing them off, I love the way they've handled it. They're not angry. They're not angry like we're going to prove you wrong. All right, they're so confident in themselves. They're like, okay, we're going to prove ourselves right. We know how good we are. We know we belong here. We know we are a number one seed. We didn't just happen to get lucky to get a number one seed. We beat a lot of really good basketball teams convincingly. And uh, we expect to have that. So as a result, being here is not a surprise. We're very fortunate, we understand it, that it takes a lot of hard work and some luck. Uh, but we expect to be here. And coach to your right. Jermaine Farrell, WFXR in Roanoke. Coach. Dallas Cowboy fan, you're here in Dallas. Have you had any of the Cowboys reach out to you, anyone from the organization to come out to AT&T Stadium or come out to the Star? Because you know, you're, you're here now. We talked about it earlier. said so it would be a dream to be here, and now you're here. So has Jerry reach out to you, anybody? No, no I haven't, haven't. But I tell you what, um, I got a text, a direct text from, uh, from uh, or a tweet, I'm sorry, a tweet and from Magic Johnson. And uh, that put me on cloud nine. I was a fanboy when I got that. So I've already got my staff, you know, going to print it out, put it on a, a, a big cutout, and put it in my man cave uh, for anybody to come and see. Uh, but then, then a really cool moment. I mean, I mean I've, I've watched the video a hundred times. Uh, I'm a big Dodgers fan, big Dodgers fan. My grandfather, people ask me, why are you a Dodgers fan? Uh, my grandfather grew up watching Jackie Robinson and everything that he accomplished, breaking down barriers. And I just became a Dodgers fan because my grandfather was a Dodgers fan. And then he talked to me about the history. So I'm a big, big Dodgers fan. Uh, and Dave Roberts reached out and he sent me a video message. And he said, when I got it, I saw his face. And I'm like, what is this? And, uh, and it says, he started off, he said, Coach Brooks. And I'm like, he said my name. <laughs> And it was personalized, and he talked about the culture. He's watching our games and the culture that is uh, emulated through. I mean, just resonates through the TV. And, uh, and at the end of it, he says, um, 
first he said, I hope to see you at a game. So I, I took that as an invitation, so I'm going to take it up on it. But uh, he, said, he said, go Dodgers and go Hokies. And that's two of my favorite teams, and that's all I needed right there. So it, it was a special moment for me um, and for him to reach out because he's somebody that, you know, I try to emulate, you know, his persona and the way that he goes about his business. Back here to you, Lawson. Hey, Kenny, Anthony Romano, WDBJ, congratulations on getting to this point. Does LSU remind you of any of the opponents that you faced during the season or during this run? And how do you feel as if your ACC schedule and, and, and the, the talent that was in the conference this year has prepared you for this stage? Yes, uh, LSU, extremely well coached. Uh, they're physical, they're fast, they're tough, they're confident. Uh, and it, it reminds me a lot of the team we played two games ago in Tennessee. We played Tennessee twice this year and uh, very similar styles uh, in what they do. They rely, they're very reliant on their athleticism, their length, uh, their ability to rebound the basketball. Uh, so I think that game has prepared us. Both of those games have prepared us. Um, we played two games earlier in, in the Bahamas. We played against Kentucky and uh, Missouri, and maybe they're not as talented as those groups, but they play a very similar style, very physical. And then, then when we went through the ACC, we have a lot of good teams in the ACC. Uh, and to go through our conference and get the championship, we had to go through Miami, who was in the Elite Eight. They play a very similar style. Uh, it was on display when they played against LSU. Uh, we had to play against um, Duke, who plays a very similar style, very physical, reliant on the press, pressure. Uh, and then we had to play Louisville, uh, who was also in the Elite Eight, to get to the championship. So I think our schedule has really prepared us for moments like this because of the way that teams have played. Um, and, and I think our kids have seen it all. You know. Elizabeth, I, we don't know what kind of coverage they're going to get, but we've seen it all and, uh, and we'll adapt to whatever they're going to do, whether it's single coverage, whether it's double, whether it's triple. Um, and so we'll, we'll be ready. Coach, right over here to your left. Okay. Hi, Kenny. Uh, Scott Rabelais with The Advocate in Baton Rouge. Um, obviously, uh, both teams have benefited from, from the transfer portal, but in this era of the transfer portal, NIL, for, to do what Coach Mulkey has done so quickly at LSU to join that handful of coaches who've led multiple programs to the Final Four, what, what does that say about the, what the job you think she's done from a coaching perspective, knowing how even more difficult it is to build a program in yeah, this era? She, she's, uh, she's capitalized on the opportunity with the transfer portal, uh, but she's done it the right way. A lot of people want to go into the transfer portal and they want to, um, they just want to collect, have a collection of talent. You know, this kid averaged 14 points at such and such. Maybe they should be able to do that here. Well, it's not always the case. Uh, and, and she's done what we've done. And we've gone out and got kids who are a good fit for your program, not just because they're, they're, their stats are really good. Um, and she's done that. And, you know, she has some personalities on that group, and she's the person to, to really handle it, uh, that situation. And she's taken them, and, you know, they've sacrificed a lot, you know, for the betterment of their team. And, uh, and it shows because the way they played and the way they've been here, I think they've, only, well, they've lost one, two games this year. And um, that's special. I don't care who you play. They play in the SEC, and they've only lost two games all year long. So she's done a magnificent job. We have another virtual question from Chris. We'll take that at this time. Chris, if you could unmute your line. Hey, Coach Brooks, it's Chris Idell from Herbert from Radio and Baltimore. Thanks for taking my question, and congratulations on making it in Dallas. Have you heard from anybody from Harrisonburg, you know, Virginia? Has anybody reached out to you and said, hey, congratulations, or any, anybody from the old area? Oh, sure, absolutely. I probably have about 300 unread messages right now. And if you are listening from Harrisonburg uh, or whoever has reached out, I promise you I'm not trying to be big time. I just don't have time to get to it. And uh, I'll have time, you know, next week to try to, to, to answer all of them. But um, I did hear from Coach Rizel. Uh, I got a, got a message from him, uh, which is very, very special. But uh, I know there's a lot of supporters in, in Harrisonburg uh, in particular. Uh, I, think I, I think I've done a really good job of, of kind of converting a lot of people in the Shenandoah Valley into uh, Virginia Tech fans. So that's, that's, a big, that's a big feat in itself. Hey, Coach, Doug Feinberg, the AP. Doug. I was talking to one of your friends the other day who said, who's been in the spot you're in right now and said that his advice to you was to take a second and enjoy the moment and not just focus on basketball because that's the, obviously the thing to do, but to take a second and soak it all in. Have you had a chance to do that yet, or is it just, I got a game tomorrow, I'm focused on that? Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I've heard from a lot of different people who've been in this situation. Uh, Quentin Hillsman, who I'm probably, you're probably referencing, uh, who was here in my, in my uh, situation a few years back. As a matter of fact, uh, Syracuse went to the, to the Final Four, the final game, 
uh, the year that I was hired at Virginia Tech. And uh, when I took the job, and you know, you're always trying to win the press conference. And, uh, and I remember saying, well, if Syracuse can do it, why can't we? And there was a huge eruption. Everybody was like, yeah, we can do it. And then immediately I was like, did I just stick my foot in my mouth? Uh, because it's a, it's a very tough task to get here. Uh, but I've heard from Quentin, I've, I've heard from Jeff Walls, I've heard from Mike Neighbors, I've heard from Kelly Graves, and they all said the same thing. Enjoy the process, enjoy it. Enjoy it because it's not easy to get here. And, he, and they said, you have a mature group, they're well coached, uh, you know what you're gonna do, and I know you guys are gonna get down to business, but make sure you allow the kids and yourself to enjoy the process, and, uh, and we've been doing that. We'll take our final question. Berman in the Roanoke Times. Uh, Kenny, uh, do you feel like Angel Reese is perhaps the best player you've gone up against this season? And what are the kind of the keys to, to dealing with her uh, tomorrow? Well, I mean, obviously, she's, uh, she's tremendously talented. Uh, she, has a, she has great stats. Uh, but I, I don't want to discredit anybody that we've already played against because we have not played against her live. Uh, we've played against some great kids. Uh, I mean, look, look at the two that we played against in Tennessee. They're as talented as anyone in the country. Uh, we've been able to play against them. Uh, Mike, so the other night, uh, she felt, I looked like she was Steph Curry. Uh, I was just like smiling sometimes when she was hitting some of the shots that she was hitting. But obviously when you get to this level, you're gonna play against very, very tough, talented players. And uh, we know we're gonna have our hands full, but um, you know, the kids will go out and they'll execute the game plan. And, and we're not gonna shut her down. We're, we're not, we don't expect to do that, but we just wanna make it tough for her and put her in situations uh, and where she's not comfortable. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys.